Today's episode is called, May's Helping Hand. Cousin May, Shirley Mitchell, creates chaos at the shady rest with her good intentions, until Aunt Helen arrives to save the day. Rosemary DeCamp appears as Aunt Helen in the first of six episodes in a row. Original air date, February 24, 1968. tracks to the junction forget about your cares it is time to relax at the junction lots of curves you bet and even more when you get to the junction petticoat junction there's a little hotel called a shady rest at the junction it is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. <laughs> Welcome to the Shady Rest. Thank you. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! We did it. Every room in the hotel is rented. We're completely full. No kidding. Won't Mom be thrilled when we write and tell her? Yeah, well, it was in the cards. You take skillful planning, top-level management, shrewd executive know-how. Had to happen. That would sure help if it fixed the hotel burn down. Well, if you want to include that. Anyway, we've got our work cut out for us now. Yeah, we sure have, honey. It's going to take a lot of executive planning. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Here's the mail. Oh, say, is there anything for me from the old boy Daisy Novelty Company? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. Oh, gone. Been waiting two weeks for them cufflinks autographed by Eddie Albert. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What? This. It's Cousin May. She's coming here. She's what? Just heard about your mother being away, but don't worry, as I am flitting to Hooterville immediately to make sure all is well. Gee. What's going on? What's that? Mom's Cousin May is coming here. To make sure we're doing everything all right. She's coming to help us out? That's like throwing an anchor to a drowning sailor. <laughs> Was going along so well. I know. Why don't we move and not leave a forwarding address? <laughs> no, no, let's not, let's not panic. Let's handle this diplomatically. And so, if you don't mind being exposed to the bubonic plague, we'd love to have you. <laughs> That's very good. Just starting to roll. I guess we should mention that the hotel was washed away in the flood. <laughs> Living in a tent ain't so bad if we had something to eat. We had something to eat? Yeah, get a load of this. Ever since the cannonball ran off the Willow Creek Bridge, we've been cut off from the outside world. <laughs> yes, yes. If for any reason you can't come, we'll all understand. Love, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you're an evil genius. Oh, that's nothing. You ought to hear what I write to the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> Send that air mail special delivery. And if Cousin May pays us a visit after that, I... Yoo-hoo! I'm here, everybody! <laughs> Cousin May. There goes a great literary effort down the drain. <laughs> there you are. Oh. Oh, you poor darlings. I know what a task it must be trying to run things by yourselves. But never fear, Mabel is here. How'd you get here, me? Well, it was the most fortunate thing. I was making connections in Riverdale when who did I run into but little old Steve here? And he brought me down in his private plane. Hi. 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 
Couldn't stick to spraying crops, huh? <laughs> Joe, she was coming here anyway. Well, something might have happened to her. <laughs> well, I gotta be getting on home. Coward. <laughs> hey, you leaving? Yeah, we're, we're doing a remodeling job on the cottage. Really? Well, you just give that little old Betty Joe a great big smooch from her cousin May and tell I'll be there just as soon as I get things straightened out here. I'm a whiz at interior decorating. Uh, yeah, well, we're kind of decided as to what we want. Ah, but the best laid plans ask gang a glee, as we say in the South. <laughs> no, we don't say that in the South. <laughs> well, tell I'll be there anyway. Okay, well, I'll warn, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll tell her you're coming. Bye. Well, now, as soon as we get me settled down in my room, we can get right down to all our problems. Uh, well, that's our first problem. What is? Uh, we don't have a room. Hey, that's right. We're all full up. We don't have a place to put you. Gee, what a shame, me. I'll tell you what you do. Hmm? You just run along and come back later. We'll have something to open up in the next three or four months. Oh, now, something will work out. Something always does. Stanley, you handle this or I will. Go on, go on, go on. Is there something I can do for you, Mr. Benson? Well, I'm afraid I have a complaint. Oh? If that is, Mrs. Benson has a complaint. She almost always has, of course, but... <laughs> I demand satisfaction. Oh, good man. Yes, ma'am? Uh, I am Maid Bell Jennings. My cousin Kate is the proprietor of this place, but I'm just here to help out while she's away. Now then, is there anything I can do for you, Mr... Uh, Benson. Ben. Stanley Benson. Benson. Yeah, well, I really don't know where to start. Um, well, first of all, we don't seem to have enough hangers in our closet. And, and I had to carry my own bags. And our window shade won't stay up. We're crying out loud. Is that all you want? Oh, now, Mr. Carson, is that a way to win friends? Surely you can see that in Mr. Benson here, you are dealing with a man who is used to getting his own way. Oh, you are a man of action, aren't you? Well, oh, I can tell. I've seen men of action and authority at work. Sometimes they appear to be meek and mild, but that's only because they're so confident. <laughs> really? They don't need to bluster or swagger. This is a male fist in a velvet glove. <laughs> now, you just sit back and dictate exactly what you're demanding of us. Well, I, I'm not really demanding. Oh, of course you are. Pour it all out. Criticize anything you want. Well, I, I don't feel like criticizing. What do you mean, everything is all right? Well... <laughs> Stanley? <laughs> I was just telling Maybell here, uh, Miss Jennings, of our needs. Oh, I'm more or less in charge here. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, we don't have any needs. We're leaving. Leaving? That's right. Send someone up for our bags immediately. Come, Stanley. But, dearest, Stanley! <laughs> <laughs> Now we got a vacant room on our hands. Well, then there's a place for me. You see, I've told you something would work out. Silly boy. <laughs> well, hello there, Mr. Drug. Well, cousin May, I heard you were in Hooterville. How are you finding things? Oh, well, it's been quite a struggle, but I finally managed to straighten things up at the Shady Ranch. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, uh, tell me, Mr. Drucker, how does the shady rest handle its account with your stone? Hmm? Oh, oh, they generally pay me by the tenth. The tenth of what? Well, it depends on how they're doing down there. Could be the tenth of January, the tenth of April, whatever. <laughs> Goodness gracious, that doesn't sound very businesslike. Well, it's good enough for us. We always do everything on a handshake. Well, from now on, everything's going to be different. We're starting a whole new policy. What? You'll be paid in cash on the first of each month. Well, now, wait a minute. A thing like that could foul up my bookkeeping. And because you're going to be paid in cash on the first, we'll be expecting a little old 2% discount on everything we buy from the store. 2% <laughs> discount? Now, hold on here. Well, I'm sorry, but that's the way it's going to be, Mr. Drucker. Does Kate know about this? No, but she'll thank me when she sees how I've corrected this slipshoddy way of doing business. <laughs> it's not slipshoddy. It's just friendly, that's all. Well, it certainly seems slipshoddy to me. I mean, nobody knows where anybody else stands. Kate and me know where we stand. If she needs credit, she gets it. When things are doing good down at the Shady Rest, she pays me in full. Maybe with a chicken dumpling dinner for interest. <laughs> We've been doing things that way for years, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Mr. Drucker, we'll be expecting the 2% discount. I'm sorry, but it's my duty to the Shady Rest to be firm about this. 
Well, I'm sorry, but it's my duty to me to turn you down. Mr. Trucker, do you know what this means? It means that the Shady Rest will be taking all of its business to that big new market in Pixley. Well, that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to be. Mr. Drucker, darling, did you understand what I just said? I, said I understood perfectly. How come you girls are empty-handed? Mr. Drucker wouldn't give us any groceries. Our credit has been cut off. How'd that come about? As if I didn't know. <laughs> You're right. It's all due to Cousin May. Yeah, well, this time she's going just a little bit too far. I can put up with most anything, but when she starts meddling with her groceries, she's asking for it. Where is she now? I think she was going to drop by Betty Joe's. <laughs> I've been wanting to get over and see you, but we've oh. been remodeling. And I know, Sugar. Steve told me all about it, and that's exactly why I'm here, to help you with the redecorating. Oh, well, Cousin May, we appreciate your help. Oh, now, don't you worry your pretty little head. My goodness, darling, you're not imposing one bit. That's why I'm here to help. Now, I'll tell you what, you sit right down here and let's plan the whole thing. Now, first, I think we can make it all <laughs> Maybe this could be a little... And maybe this a little more like that. I guess so. Well, now, aren't you going to tell Cousin May what this is for? I'm waiting for a date. Oh? Well, when is he due? Not for a half hour. But I don't want to be late. Not for Jeff. Mmm, pretty important, huh? Well, Miss Seal, going about it all the wrong way. Now, you run right on back upstairs. But Cousin May... Honey, this is strategy. You don't wait for the boy, he waits for you. <laughs> but Jeff doesn't like to be kept waiting. No man likes it, but that's how we train him. Now, run on up. But Cousin May... Up, up, up. Up, all the way back to your room, you hear? I'll let you know when it's time. That's my girl. <laughs> I'm looking for Barbie Jo. Oh, which one are you? Which one? Boyfriend. She has so many, you know, flitting in and flitting out. Oh, really? But, well, my name is Jeff Powers. Oh, yeah, she mentioned you might drop by. Well, we had a date. A date? So early? We're going to an astronomy lecture. I want to be sure of getting a good seat. Uh, could I call... A lecture on a date? Professor Mansfield. The topic is Wither Saturn. <laughs> You're fooling. I don't want to be late. Bobby Joe! Oh, hush now, my goodness. Girls as popular as Bobby Joe can't be rushed. Yeah, but... She'll be down in a half hour or so. A half an hour? You must learn to have more patience. But, but I'm gonna miss Professor Mansfield. How can you compare waiting for a girl like Bobby Joe with missing a lecture by Professor Mansfield? You're right. Mm -hmm. Tell her I'm going ahead. <laughs> She's interested, she can come later. <laughs> Appreciate you much more the next time. But I don't want to wait till the next time. <laughs> Jeff! Jeff! He's gone. Well, you showed him. Yeah, I showed him. Well, all he wanted to do was take you to a lecture. Now, what's the fun in going to a lecture? The fun is coming home. <laughs> Stranger. <laughs> come on now, Sam. I come in to fetch things up. Oh, you did, huh? Sure. We've been friends too long to let something come between us like this. Get your meat hooks out of there. <laughs> Any way to treat an old customer? You ain't a customer, period. The account is closed. That's May's doings, and you know it. I didn't hear you give any counterman in orders. Well, uh, it ain't easy with someone as strong-willed as May. You just don't know what it's like. Uh, I gotta grant you, she's kind of hard to deal with. And you're only talking as the opposition. You should see how it is when she's on your side. <laughs> Once and for all, I'm offering you my hand. I'm willing to forgive and forget. What's the matter? Why don't you shake? Well, I was just thinking. 
There's a lot to be said in favor of being enemies with you. For one thing, I save a lot on your freeloading. <laughs> that does it. I'm withdrawing my handshake, you chief skate. Well, that suits me just fine, you moocher. I'll never set my foot in this store again as long as I live. That's the best news I've heard in years. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sam. Uncle Joe. Boy, are you a creep for sure, I... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Much as I hate to agree with him, I do. We could use a touch of sanity around here. Here, have a cookie. No, I don't mind if I do. Oh, I do things haven't changed any. No, oh, I'm still taking a beating. Well, what brings you here, Ellen? Say, I'm off to see the world. And you're starting with Hooterville? I can't think of a better place. But isn't this the middle of the school season? That's all behind me. I have clapped to my last eraser. <laughs> There's the good old cannonball. Well, it's time for me to get down to Shady Rest. Well, they sure could use you. What do you mean by that? You better fill her in on the train, Joe. Yeah, it'll take the whole trip. Where's your bag, Joe? Right here. Don't worry, darling. Everything works out for the best. That's my philosophy. <laughs> and what did she do now? Well, while she was in Pixie, she ran into my agent who was coming here to tell me about a booking he had for me in Topeka. The one you were waiting for? Well, she told him I wasn't interested in small town stuff. It had to be Chicago or nothing. And? Nothing. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. I've been waiting so long for this engagement. She passes it off with everything works out for the best. That's the same thing she told me when Jeff ran out on me last night. And she's fixed it so I doubt if Steve will ever speak to me again. <laughs> Our cousin May came. What do you mean? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. You know how it is with Cousin May. She doesn't mean any harm. No, it just turns out that way. <laughs> Listen, you girls are worse than Uncle Joe here. May is a fine, warm person. She wouldn't do anybody any harm. So I think you're making a mistake if you think she's doing anything but just helping out here. Oh, did I hear my name mentioned? Oh, Helen, how wonderful to see you. Hey, darling, you look as beautiful as ever. Oh, thank you. Well, what happened on earth brings you here? She don't want a trip around the world. How's that for a good idea? Trip <laughs> around the world? Oh, how exciting. Yes, this is my first stop. In fact, I had my travel agent send all my reservations here. You did? Yes, see, they weren't confirmed when I left, so I, uh... Hmm. What's the matter? Well, you know, I bet that's what came for you and the mayor yesterday. They were right. Good, then you have them. No. No? Well, I sent them back. Well, weren't they addressed to me, care of Shady Rest? Yes, but you weren't here. Well, darling, didn't it occur to you that I might be coming if I had something sent here? Well, you know the thought flitted through my mind, but I dismissed it. Join the group. <laughs> May, where did you send them back to? Well, let me think now. I either sent them to the airline or to the steamship company, or to your travel agent, or to your home address. She's got it narrowed down to anywhere. <laughs> oh, well, they'll turn up sooner or later. Now, why don't you just go on ahead, and I'll send them to you somewhere along the line. May, without my tickets, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> oh. Well, like I always say, everything always ends up for the best. <laughs> So now you see what we're up against. Well, it didn't take long to convert me. <laughs> what are we going to do? She's really very sweet and means well. But if she stays much longer... I got it. Why don't we drop her some hints that we want her to leave? You know, like change the lock on her door. <laughs> Joe, that's mean. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. We don't want to hurt her. So let's do it in a kindly way. Let's give her a party. Oh, that's a great way to get rid of her. It could be. If it's a farewell party. I declare, this is the loveliest farewell party I've ever had. Well, May, I can only say one thing. You deserve it. <laughs> yeah, we all realize you came here to give us a helping hand. Every one of us has been foul, I mean touched by them. <laughs> and now that you're leaving, I think I speak for everybody when I say, 
Nice going. Uh, well, bless you all and goodbye. I'll eat to that. Make mine a big piece. <laughs> I'd like to say you got here just in time. Oh, you all would have done something. Yeah, like have a civil war. <laughs> now look at him. I may even leave the lid off the cookie jar when old Fatsel comes around. <laughs> yes, sir, Ellen, you've done a job that even Kate couldn't do any better. Uh... Hey, don't you think it's about time for the coupe de grace? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wanted to show you how we feel. I know. And that's why I could never leave you now. You what? Well, knowing how you feel, I couldn't deprive you of me. <laughs> May, dear, I know how much your offer means to these people, but they can't let you do it. The sacrifice is too much. Sacrifice? You know what happens this weekend, don't you? The spring cotillion in Savannah. The spring cotillion. And you know you never could miss that. Oh, no. Would you... Could you please forgive me if I just split out? Oh, yes. We'll forgive you. Bless you. Bless you all. I'll just go up and get my bags. They're all packed. I just happen to have your things right down here. <laughs> yes. And if y'all ever need me to come and help again, you just holler and I'll come a flitting. You hear now? <laughs> Thank you. 